In this lesson, we're going to look at bubble sorts. We're going to try to describe the purpose of a bubble sort and a sort in general. We're going to try and explain how a bubble sort works using pseudocode, and we're going to demonstrate using a bubble sort. The function of a sort is to take a series of entries and rearrange them into a new order. Normally, we can use ascending or descending. So in this particular case, I've gone from the numbers at the top array to the numbers at the bottom array. This has rearranged them in ascending order. The numbers go up. I can do the same thing as descending if the numbers go down. Humans can do this very quickly, and you know, I could do that. I did do that by hand. If they get too many numbers, that's going to become extremely slow or almost impossible. To overcome this, we have two different sort functions that we need to think about: the bubble sort and the merge sort. We'll do about bubble sort today, and in future lessons, we'll do about the merge sort. The bubble sort is the first one we're going to look at, and what I'm going to do is show you how to do bubble sorts in ascending order. So what it actually does is it takes the first number, in this particular case 7, and it compares it with the next number along in this particular case 3. So if the first element 7 is greater than the second element 3, what the algorithm will need to do is swap them over for me. It will then move along the line doing the same things each time. As you can see with four elements there are going to be three checks because there's three pairs that I can check together. So there are going to be three checks for every pass. Each pass is what happens when you get to the end. So if we start off with the first two numbers, we're going to compare the seven and the three. I'm going to need to swap them. So the, no, the array will now become the next one down, which is three, seven, four, one. I then move along one position to where the seven is now, and I compare the seven with the four. Because the seven is greater than the four, I swap them again. I then move along another position and I, and I look at the third element and compare it with the fourth. In this particular case, the seven will move to the end of the row. So I've now done one pass because I have done the three checks that I needed to do. So what the algorithm will need to do is start at the beginning and compare the first element with the second element again. If, they are the, if the first element is again greater than the second element, they will swap. If it isn't, they will stay the same. So we can work our way through the array doing the same thing as we were before. So here is the second pass. The third pass will then move the one right to the end of the position, as you can see here. So if you work your way down the list, you can see that the largest number gets moved to the right and the smallest number over time will move to the left. This is going to quickly show you how the bubble sort works. So it's checking the first two. They, it swaps them if the one on the right is bigger than the one on the left. Notice that it is check, moving its way down the system, checking all the numbers as it moves along. It's moved the biggest number, the 50, all the way to the right now. So it carries on doing this. The big numbers keep getting moved to the right. The small numbers are ending up moving to the left. It can only check two at once. And it has to check them in order. So it has to start with the first row, first column and work its way through. As you can see, the numbers are now starting to add up. As it goes through a pass, it only blocks out one number. Okay, so the 47 is blocked, but the 46 wasn't, even though then it didn't need to move. Again, working its way through. The 36 is now moving. So even though 36 38 are in the right place. It still needs to do another run through to check they are correct. So this means this algorithm is actually quite slow. We'll leave it running just to see, to see you finish it off. But as you can see, big numbers right, little numbers left. If we had programmed it to do it the other way around and do it in descending order, it would be moving the large numbers to the left and the small numbers to the right. two tasks that I want you to have a go at today are about sorting some numbers. The first task wants you to sort the numbers in ascending order, which means that I want the lowest number on the left and the highest number on the right. I've marked the first check for you to show you how to mark the checks on your work. The second task is asking you to use the same list 
starting at the same position, but this time I want you to sort it in descending order. You need to show the steps in the same way that I did in the slide. This is the pseudo code for a bubble sort. I'll go through the rest of the code in the next lesson, but for this lesson, all I want to do is quickly show you how a computer does the swaps that you have just been doing for the tasks. The if statement is what is actually doing the swaps for me. So this if statement starts, if the item number minus one to give me element zero is greater than the number that is stored in items number, which is element one, it will actually go through and do this particular match. So if we look at the seven and the three, we can see that the seven is greater than the three, so I need swapping. I can't just copy the three into the variable, into the position for seven, and I can't copy the seven straight into the position for three. So what I need to do is set up another variable. That variable is called swap. So to swap the seven and the three, we take the seven and we set the value of the swap variable to the value I want to move. I then have seven stored in that variable. You then take the element that you want to replace the number with and copy that into that particular place. So the three is copied over the seven in element zero of items. So I've moved the three to where I need it to be. Now I need to move the seven from the swap into the three, which is where the three is stored, which is element one. So I copy the seven over that, and I've now moved the three to the seven using a swap variable to do that for me.